some of the coaches in the, rest, in the wrestling community in Maryland and Virginia and Delaware participating and trying to improve themselves to help wrestlers improve themselves. And we're so pleased and thrilled. I want to introduce some two people you may not know yet. To you. And, uh, they're going to speak to you and also do a little bit of demonstrating. One is the first American woman ever to win a gold medal with her. <laughs> when they did You're this, I call it USA Wrestling, Les Dutchess. I said, Les, what would you do without Maryland Wrestling? <laughs> the other, these both have so many accolades that it would take a half hour to say them all. But uh, Kyle started his career off at my Mount Magnanus Wrestling Station as champion from Good Council. And... Uh, participated in a Fargo program and uh, just went on and happened to win a gold medal at the Olympics this year himself. for about a 20 minute period yeah. and then talk the, the last 10 and then Helen will come back and do the exact same thing. So thank you all for coming and thank them because they have such a busy schedule. It's, it's unbelievable but they came back to Maryland to, to let you guys show your appreciation. So thanks a lot. Alright so yeah I'm going to teach for like 20 minutes and then uh, do like 10 minutes of questions. Questions would be about technique, wrestling, the Olympics, anything you guys want to talk about, Ohio State. Uh, yeah, anything. So, um, but first I'll show some technique. It's my partner. What's his name again? Matt. My partner Matt's going to help me out so I can show some technique to you guys. Um, first thing, most important thing, uh, if you want to be a good wrestler on your feet, I always say is your stance discipline. Okay? So before I get started, uh, I always make sure that I'm in a good stance. I'm a right leg lead. If uh, you're a left leg lead, then you can just do the opposite of what I say uh, for these takedowns. But how I make sure that I'm in a good stance is when I come onto the line, I touch my fingertips to the mat. Okay, this just is kind of a stance check. Make sure that my hands are low. Make sure that my knees are bent. And it uh, means I'm fast on my feet, okay? So I do a stance check, I touch my fingertips on the mat, all right, been doing this for a while, and from here I want to be able to stay in my stance the whole time I'm drilling and the whole time I'm in a match. Okay, so I do a lot of stance and motion to kind of condition my body to make sure that I can stay in my stance throughout the whole match. Because if you're in a good stance during the whole match and your hands are down and your head's up and your feet are underneath you, you can sprawl, you get your legs back, you can fake move, get angles, and it's a lot easier to get to your offense and a lot a lot harder for your opponent to get to his defense. So it's pretty simple, but real important. Because sometimes I see guys drilling with their knees locked out and their hands on the head like this. So just make sure, stance check, touch your fingertips on the mat. From here you can wrestle. You can down block, circle, fake, all that type of stuff. So. Um, I'll just show you guys my favorite takedown, and then Helen will probably show her favorite takedown when she teaches. So my favorite takedown is an ankle pick. It's uh, one that I started using actually like later on in my wrestling. I was normally like you know high crotch and single leg. That's typically what I did, so, like what everyone did. And then like probably eighth, ninth grade is when I started learning the ankle pick and learned it from a lot of different people. So we've got a couple different setups to it. Um, just and stop me if you have any questions. If anybody has any questions, you guys can stop me. So again, I'm a right leg lead. I touched the mat, I'm in a good stance. I'm a right leg lead, so I don't want to reach with my right hand because if I reach with my right hand, partner's gonna post and get to my lead leg. And I don't want that, okay? So I collar tie with my back hand first, all right? So I touch the mat, I collar tie with my back hand. I bring my head to 
the same side that I want to attack. So I'm going to be attacking his back leg, which is okay, because we're going to get it to move in front of us. So I touch the mat, I collar tie, bring my head to the same side, then I'm going to attack my lead leg hand, grab his wrist. From here, I push forward, I circle him back, so the foot's in front of me. And now this is one of the most important parts, when you guys go back and uh, to your clubs and you drill it, and you get real good at it. This is going to be the thing you guys want to focus on the most, right here. So I collar tie, I push, I circle his lead leg back in front of me. When I circle his lead leg back in front of me, I want to take everything down to the mat. I want to take his head, and I want to take his wrist, and I want to take my lead leg knee down to the mat. Here. Okay, if I leave his head up, and I try to bring my hand down to his ankle, if I try to push his head, he's going to be real strong. And come through me. That's going to stink. I don't want that to happen. So when I take his head, I try to bring his head down to his knee, and when I try to bring his hand down to his shoe, then I release, and from here it's really easy to throw him over top and get your takedown. And uh, key point, key point from that position is when I bring his head down to his knee here and his wrist down, I try to throw away his head and come to my feet. <laughs> okay? Sometimes I see guys hit the ankle pick and they throw away the head and then they fall on their belly and this guy comes over top. You guys, sometimes you'll get taken down, sometimes it'll be a stalemate, but we just, we just want our two points. Okay? So when I take him down from yeah. here, I'll throw his head away and come up to my feet. He'll usually belly out and then I'll hop on top for my takedown. That's the first setup. You guys got any questions? Cool. All right, so these are all going to kind of work together. Next setup is going to come from the same collar tie. Collar tie with my left hand. This time he's tired of me grabbing his wrist and ankle picking him. So he says, you know what? I'm not going to let him grab his. Let him, I'm not going to let him grab my wrist anymore. I'm going to grab his wrist, right? And we're like, shoot, he's got my wrist now. I can't score. What am I going to do? Anybody got any ideas? Yeah. Sprawl? You could sprawl if he shoots. That's true. If she shoots, yeah. We're going to score anyway. I heard somebody say it. We're going to score anyway. So, oh, shoot. Where you? Yeah. You could definitely do that. You could definitely tap down the head and shoot. But we're going to do another ankle kick. So that's a good idea. So what we're going to do is, this time, I collar tie with good stance, collar tie with my back hand, he decides he's going to grab my wrist. Okay? Just because he has my wrist doesn't mean I can score. Doesn't mean that uh, I can't score. Actually, I, I like this ankle pick more because I feel like it camouflages my attack. So my guy, the guy that I'm wrestling doesn't know that I'm going to score or I'm going to get to his leg until the very last minute. Okay? The very last second. And then... It's already too late. All right, so I collar tie, he grabs my wrist. We do the same motion. I push forward, I circle back. His foot's out in front now, and I take his head and my hand straight down his mat to the back of his ankle, throw his head away, come up to our feet. Okay, so the finish is going to be the same every time we do it, but different setup. You guys got that one? That one cool? All right. Now... This is like the most common position that I see in high school wrestling and junior league wrestling. This head-to-head -head position right here. I collar tie, he collar tie. Right here, and we're stuck. And we're just squeezing as hard as we possibly can and trying to rip his head off or something, I don't know. But this is another good place for us to have an ankle kick because we end up there a lot, okay? So again, I'm in a good stance. Remember, good stance. I'm in a good stance, I, part, I, I collar tie my partner, he re-collar ties me. What I'm gonna do is thumb block on his shoulder, here, okay? This is a thumb block, your arm up. A thumb block right here. Four fingers on his tricep, other finger in, inside, okay? Why I like the thumb block is because I can feel my opponent lower his level, so I know if he'll attack, I know if he's about to attack, and then I can also push him away 
or snap him down. If I just lay my hand on his, if I lay my hand on his shoulder, he can low, lower his level and nothing's stopping him. Okay. If I lay my hand on his arm here, same deal. He can lower his level and nothing's stopping him. But when I put my thumb, good thumb block on his head, and he lowers his level, I can push him away, and I can feel feel the pressure on my thumb and lower my level with him. All right. So here. I collar tie, he collar ties me, we're in real tight. It's really hard to score on somebody if you're in real tight. All right, you need a little bit of space. So what I do is I extend my arm here, and then I take my hand, my thumb block hand, and I go to the middle of his arm, basically to his elbow, all right? But I'm right here with it. I'm not grabbing his uh, elbow like a hot dog or whatever. I put my hand straight from the thumb block, the middle of his elbow and I'm gonna bring it bring that to my chest okay so I'm here I push away I bring his elbow to my chest the foot comes forward and now I take everything straight down to the mat release his elbow take a pick okay sometimes if you do this one right you won't even have to hit your knee if you snap his elbow to your chest hard enough his foot will come flying forward, and then you can kind of just reach down and grab it and throw away his head. Still got to pull his head down. But again, one more time. I collar tied. He collar ties me. We're in real tight. I push away with the thumb block. Now I bring his elbow back to my chest. His foot comes forward. I bring his head and his elbow down to the mat. Release his elbow to his ankle. Throw it away. Up to our feet. Okay, any questions? And I like moves, I like moves where I know what he's gonna do before he knows what he's gonna do. Okay, so I know that his foot is going to come forward even though he doesn't. Because I know when I snap, his foot's gonna come forward and I'll be able to score off of that. Okay, next ankle pick will be the opposite side of the body. Any questions? All right, we're cool. All right, next ankle pick is going to be come off of when he collar ties me, okay? And it's going to come from an overtie. And this is, uh, this is probably one of my best ankle picks, one that I hit on a lot of different people because uh, it's pretty tricky. This guy doesn't feel it. So we've been attacking the same side of the body throughout the whole match. This time we're going to go to the opposite side of the body. So he collar ties my head, and I'm going to overtie. All an overtie is... I take my hand, I put it on his ear, over top of his collar tie, and I bring his head to his bicep, okay? Why I bring his head to his bicep is it kind of messes up his stance a little bit, makes it harder for him to shoot, all right? Makes it harder for him to shoot, and you definitely don't want him coming underneath of your arm, so that's why I bring his head to his bicep. Grab his ear, head to his bicep, and then I take my free hand, and I grab his wrist, okay? From here, we can do a lot of different things. We can let go of the head, fake, and come back out. We can take the hand off your head, here. Or we can do this ankle pick. This is where I switch my feet. Switch my feet so I'm closer to his foot. Everything goes down to the mat again. Release his hand, throw his head away, ankle pick. And uh, how, how I took his hand off his head, that's kind of like probably the most important thing that I do in my hand fighting. And this is kind of a secret that I don't typically reveal at clinics or camps, but since this is a great state of Maryland, and I got all these Maryland wrestlers here, I'm going to reveal this little secret to you guys, all right? I was taught this by one of my partners, Travel DeLognev, he was a heavyweight Olympian, uh, this year, he was a heavyweight Olympian in 2012, and uh, he taught me this technique because he was doing it to me while I was wrestling him. I had no idea he was doing it to me, but he kept doing it to me over and over again. I was like, man, my lower back is so tired. I can't get my stance anymore. He's hand fighting me all over the mat. My feet are so heavy. I'm like, what are you doing to me? How are you doing this to me? And he showed me this setup. 
and that was the worst mistake he ever made. <laughs> now, that's all I do to him, and it's all I try to do to people while I'm wrestling them. Okay, and a lot of different setups come from it. I'm just going to show you guys how to do it, and then you guys be creative and find different ways to score from it. But it's real simple. So it comes from an overtie. He's going to collar tie me. I'm going to come over top, bring his head to his ear, just like we were setting up that ankle pick. What I'm going to do is I take my chin, I bring it to my chest, I take my elbow, and I pull down. And as I pull down, his hand's going to come off my head here. And now I keep my hand on his head, which puts pressure on his lower back, and he's underneath me. So I can be fast in here. I can get an ankle here, he can circle back, get an ankle here. But it makes him move his feet, and it makes him really tired, and it makes his feet heavy. So if you guys ever watch my video, and if you guys can get out and do this, you can watch my video because I do it a lot in the matches. And a lot of times, a lot of my scores come off of this tie. Because it's uh, I get him underneath me, and I push down. And when I push down, he pushes up, and I can shoot underneath. Okay, but again, here it is. I overtie, hand on his ear, bring his hand to his bicep. I take my chin, I put it to my chest, and I take his hand off by rolling my elbow over top, putting it down. Okay, when I was first learning it, I had a really hard time getting his hand off my head. I would, I would overtie him, and I would put my chin to my chest, and I would just be going like this, and nothing would happen, okay? What you do when you're first learning it is you take your lead leg and you step back as you put your chin to your chest and pull his head down here. It makes it a lot easier. So you go leg back, leg forward. And then as you get better at it, you're able to just take it off and you lower your level. As you can see, I lowered my level. He came out of his stance. I'm in a good position to score here. Blast right through him. Okay? So... Again, collar tie, hand on his ear, head to his bicep. You can grab a wrist, you can go to his tricep, whatever you want to do. But chin to your chest, elbow go down. Now I'm over top of him, and we can do a lot of different things. We can cut step to the side, an ankle pick. I pull down, he pulls up, double. Or I can just suck him down into a front headlock. Yeah, I take his hand off my head and suck him down and do a front headlock and score. Okay? But, yeah, I think that was 20 minutes. If, if, uh, the ankle picks are all the same finish, just different setups. But that, that taking the hand off your head has been probably one of the most influential things in my wrestling so far. So if you take anything away from what I just taught, that's the most important thing, okay? And uh, if you're getting tired, one more thing, if you're getting tired of your partner doing it to you, so if my partner's gonna try to take my hand off, if, he, if I'm trying to take his hand off his head and you get tired of your partner doing it to you during live, what you do is you just flatten your hand on his back. So you flatten your hand on my back, I try to take it off, now I can't, okay? So that's something that I have to do to uh, people who are doing it to me, but. That's the counter to it, but most of the time people will counter and you'll just be able to do it throughout the whole match. So if you guys got any questions about now anything, the Olympics, thanks man, I appreciate it. Yeah, if you guys got questions about the Olympics, Maryland wrestling, any questions about it? high school for three years. I went to uh, Sykesville Middle School, lived in Carroll County, still do, live in Carroll County. I went to public school up until my freshman year. And then my junior year, I um, transferred, went out to Colorado Springs to train for a year at the training center. So that was fun. But uh, went to good town for three years. Yeah. Aside from your training regimen, what are you doing off the mat mentally to prepare for these worlds? Yeah, so it's 
good question. Um, I always talk a lot about valuing the correct things. So I, I try to value the things that I can control. And I know I can always control my effort while I'm wrestling. I know I, and the mindset guys, I know they probably talked about this. <laughs> I can always control my effort. I can always control my attitude. I can control my attack rate, how many times I attack while I'm on the mat. I can control how stingy I am in each position. So these are things that I think about uh, a lot, even when I'm not wrestling, but especially leading up to practice uh, throughout the day and after practice, I evaluate myself and uh, just talk about, you know, just think in my head what I did well during practice. Did I value those things? Or the other side of it, the other side of it is valuing things you can't control, which as much as all of us want to control winning, we can't control winning. Because if I could control winning, my record would be a thousand and oh. And no one would ever have beat me and I would have beat everyone by a hundred points. But because I can't control the outcome, I've lost. And you can value things like the accolades, you can value things like uh, the money, or Twitter followers and Instagram followers, all that cool stuff. And valuing that stuff isn't bad, you know, and it comes naturally because those are the things you want the most, right? But uh, a lot of times I feel like that's made me nervous and anxious before I competed. So uh, when I value the things that I can't control, like my effort and how hard, just how, how much can I get out of myself while I'm wrestling and kind of let the other stuff fall into the back burner because no matter what, no matter what, I'm never going to step on the mat and say, I want to lose, right? And my natural instinct is always going to be, I want to win when I step on this mat. I'm a competitor. But I don't need to think about that because I already know that's what I want. I need to, I need to place these things in my mind that I can control. I need to make sure that I'm still having fun and uh, wrestling, trying to wrestle to the best of my ability. And if I can think about that stuff, it calms me down. And... Uh, allows me to um, wrestle as hard as I can. And it's good, you know, as coaches and as parents, it's, it's good to remind your athletes or your kid or your friends. Remind them, you know, I, I need reminders from people, uh, my training partners and my coaches, because I take the sport really seriously. I train hard. I want to do well. But when people can remind me, say, hey, man, just – Remember why you do this? You do this because you love it. Um, and wrestle hard. Just wrestle hard. I don't have anything else. Wrestle hard and have fun. As long as you do those two things, then there's nothing else I can ask of you. So, like, yeah. Okay. Thank you guys, that was great coming up.
never match their strength. I knew I wasn't going to have the same strength as them. So I really liked to rely on my technique. That's what I had to um, capitalize on. And also, a move like the low single is awesome because uh, it's not about strength. Um, I would definitely not choose ever to tie up a Kyle, especially after that demonstration. So my game plan right now would be to just try to shoot a low single from the open. And so I think there's benefits of um, having moves from ties, but also from open. And so with that, I'm just going to start. I'm just going to have Kyle stand here. And the key point uh, that I want to note about shooting from the open is that I think the low single for me is a huge timing move. So if I'm this close, it's not very realistic for me to shoot a low single. I would shoot a single leg or I would tie up a fireman's carry, something else. So I like to shoot my low single from out here. And again, um, the body position rules are really, really important. So you guys probably know the move. It's not that it's um, you know, super fancy advanced moves, but it's like every little body position point is key. So I'm just going to show that right now. And I'm going to start very basic. I'm going to show you the way that you can build up to practice it so that you reinforce good habits. So I'm starting in my stance, and when I shoot this, I'm not diving down to it. I'm lowering my level, and I want to drop my knee, my hand right here, and my head right here. And if I, all I have to do is time it, and he's going to take that step. So how do I get in that position every time? This hand, every single time, I want to wrap around here. So if I pick this foot up, it would look like it fits perfectly from my elbow down to my hand. And I don't want my hand here on the ankle. He can, if my hand's on the ankle, he can step out. If it's here and he steps out, even if he steps back, I still have it, so he's gonna go over. So I'm wrapping this right here. I don't want my elbow up here because he can still turn in. There's not gonna be pressure. When it's here, if he tries to turn his foot, he's gonna, um, his elbow's gonna block it. I want it completely on the mat, and I just wanna wrap my hand around. Do you guys see that? So first, I'm lowering my level, I'm dropping, and I'm wrapping my hand, okay? The next thing that I want is right here on his knee, this is where I want this part of my forehead to go, okay? This is really crucial because this is what's gonna get him to step. This move, it's not, I'm not trying to, you know, shoot here and push <coughs> over or anything. All I have to do is time to just tap my head right here and he's gonna take this step back. So he's standing, I lower my level, I'm not, I'm not pushing hard on your knee, right? No. So the reason that he's stepping back is because of the pressure and the angle that I'm putting on his leg. When I drop this hand here and I push my head here, it forces him, it pushes the pressure on his knee, this locks it out, and this pushes his knee over. So eventually, just lightly, I can push it all the way down. So again, a big strong guy like Kyle, I'm gonna lose any tie, so I need to find something else. This isn't about blasting through or using my strength. It's about making sure that I have good body position and I'm lining everything up so that I can complete this game down. So the last thing, uh, or the last point of the body position is how do I get my head, my arm to wrap around his ankle and my head to align perfectly with his knee every time? And this is the part that I think uh, a lot of people get lost on a little bit, and that's your other hand. So if I shoot on both elbows, like just physically the way my body is, I can't lift my head higher than this. So when I lift this one hand, it lifts my head so that I'm at, in line with his knee. So if I shoot both hands down and I'm looking, the, the pressure's not here, I'm bent over, he can just drive his knee into me or yeah, bend down or anything and then I'm going to get stuck. So when I'm shooting, I want all three of those to happen at once. So the way I drilled it over and over again before I ever shot it was just lower my level, drop. This hand posted, this hand wrapped around, and my head just passed, all I want him to do is step. So if I if I got him to take a light step, then I knew that everything was in a correct position. So, and the reason that step is helpful and all the body position is that moving forward, um, it can transition into any other move. So let's say uh, I'm as strong as Kyle, that's my goal, um, and we're in the same weight class, and we're wrestling over and over again, and women's wrestling is a D1 sport, and we're in the finals, and he knows that I'm hitting so this time when I go to shoot, he's going to step back. So if I go to shoot, I just switch everything. So I went from, I did this, everything I just did here, my right arm down, my left hand posted, I switch. This arm still wraps around, this is still posted, this still pushes in the knee. He's still going to go down. So we're wrestling around, he knows that I have this ankle pick, whatever leg he needs. And again, it's, if you do the move 
fast, but when you're learning it, when you drill it, reinforce the good habit now. Because here's the thing about here is the thing about habits. Either way, it it hurts. You know, if you do a bad habit, if I'm shooting with my head down, it's gonna hurt when someone's sprawling. If I have to do a thousand reps, you know, my neck's gonna hurt at the end of the day. So yes, it might seem like it's harder to shoot with the head up and push and finish, but I'm telling you a good habit feels better when you're resting in a match and you finish it face down. So reinforce the habit now. You can literally just drill those two parts over and over again. And you can build them on anyone. Kyle's not my size, but I'm not using my strength right now. It's all about technique. And so if you feel like um, you know, you're not gonna match strength with someone or speed, uh, this is a great move because it's timing. And so again, another critical point is just knowing what move to hit when. So um, if I'm this close, I can't drop, I'm gonna shoot through him. And it's just, he'll be able to just drag his knee into me or sprawl or you know tie up with me. So this really comes from maybe we're tying up, there's a break in action, he circles away, and I know that when he steps back, I'm just gonna shoot. So again, um, this is one of my favorite moves. I do a lot of stuff with the pies now, so if people stay away, uh, this is a great way to finish. And I really believe that uh, body position will, will translate into you know um, any other position in wrestling. So if your head is, <coughs> you always want your head up, if he steps out with, with this one, it's just still switching here. So the body position translates over. When I'm finishing a single, I still want my head up. When I'm in a stance, I don't want to be wrestling like this. So again, um, if you have the way that you like to do the move, that's great. I would just challenge you to try this. And if it's not for you, then, then that's great as well. So I think we all have our own ways of doing things. And um, I'm sure Kyle goes in with different than mine. This is what I prefer because, again, I lost a lot of strength wrestling the boys growing up, so I needed to find ways to capitalize. And uh, <coughs> any questions? soccer would be like, what do the players on the field do until the ball gets to the goal? So the takedowns are the shooting, but the setup is the really important part, which is the ball management. So with this, you can kind of find it from anywhere. I might tie up with him, and I'm pressuring, I'm pressuring him, or I'm trying to do a two-on-one, -on -one, and I, he pushes away and wants to circle. A lot of this is timing. So he circles away, or maybe I'll circle back. I know eventually he's got to step in. The setup is really loading. So if I'm not ready to shot, it's not going to be there. So whether he's circling, sometimes I'll circle. Um, I, I think with this move, it's, for me, it's a distance move. Would you, you have a different setup? Yeah, I mean, I would, yeah, from distance, that's one of the best ways to shoot it. So, uh, and like you said, you don't got to be real fast. The distance is a really good way to do it. From uh, guys, uh, Clear and tie. So if Helen's on me and I try to clear and tie and I circle back, she can go. You know, but all the same thing. Distance works well. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you can find the setup low to high. You know, if he's pulling his head down, he's going to pull it up. That's when I shoot. If I fake a shot, he's going to down block. That's when I snap. So with this, it's, um, I wouldn't say I have one go to setup because it's from the open. So I'm just kind of looking to see. What, what foot is he leading? Maybe I'll, I'll fake to get a different foot leading and then I'll drop into that or I'll wait for him to circle. What I prefer is really just, I'm timing his steps. So if he's circling a lot, okay, I'm gonna know eventually I'm gonna time it to shoot the low single. So for me, it's a huge timing move. Um, and then I love it because it's a great combination move and you can also um, change up the variety a little bit. So I also like to shoot it with my head on the outside one of my favorite uh, variations of it. So let's say I fake and Kyle steps back, and instead of shooting this way, you can also shoot outside. So to just show you without the fake first, just so I drop, same thing. This hand's posting because this keeps, this keeps my head in line with his knee. This arm is still dropping. If I'm above like this, then his joints can turn, he can pivot, I'm gonna get but when he's like this, or when my elbow's down, I'm really blocking his toe from pivoting. And this hand right here, it's this holds. If he tries to 
step up, or if he tries to kick away, I have it like a football. Okay, Kyle, tell me if this is a skill. <laughs> it or anything again it's just about body positioning and um, I don't have to be strong to apply pressure to his knee if my body is aligned with his where it's you know um, kind of blocking his leg from turning out so I drop head outside this is key because if my head goes down it's not really putting pressure and he can start to turn his knee into me but when my head's here, again, like with any takedown, you're going to drive your head to where you're going. So I'm looking to where I'm going. And I need this to be a football because if I pick it up like this, he's going to kick out. Right? So I have to block that toe from being able to uh, kick out. So this one, I'll kind of shoot diagonal. I'll tie up. And then turn here. So again, this is lined up. I just slide my knee. And I'm trying to stay as close as possible. Right? So this is where the pressure is. And when I come up. I actually saw uh, Dennis Barbouche, Russian, Russian wrestler, uh, he was a proud Finnish. I got to go to Russia and he did this and it really hurt. Uh, so <laughs> it, um, yeah, I'm holding this ankle there because this is going to tell him that he doesn't want to kick out, right? Hold on, this is, and then lastly, uh, you know, I've seen Kyle do this all the time. It's a really good habit. Um, to drill the takedown to a turn. I know if you guys are wrestling folk style, it might be a little bit different, but this is a great move for folk style, and it's going to be, I think, even better for freestyle because it transitions really great to a turn. So I'm here, I set up, I shoot, I get him to step. So that, but right now, I just follow through.
age was it that you knew you were going to become a woman? So I started wrestling when I was seven years old, and um, I loved it. I was terrible at every other sport I ever did. I was really shy and scared and cried a lot and got asked to quit. <laughs> um, but after my first year of wrestling, my parents came back and told me that I had to quit because there wasn't a future. Women's wrestling wasn't an Olympic sport. And then a month later, it got added to uh, the Olympic program by the IOC. So my parents came back to me and said, hey, actually, you can continue wrestling if you want because there is potentially a future for you. So that's when I decided that uh, when I was eight that I wanted to be an Olympian because I felt like the thing I loved to do got taken away from me. So why not go for uh, the greatest achievement you can? But it was a lot easier to set the goal when I was eight when I didn't know what I was, uh, what it entailed. So I never wanted to quit wrestling. I love it. I love what I do. I never wanted to quit until, except for like the past three months. <laughs>
but honestly, uh, none of it matters. Uh, my coach used to always say, every decision you make, compare it to a gold medal. And uh, if it doesn't compare, then it's not worth it. So I said no to a lot of things, and I keep that goal to this point. Okay, Ellen, uh, can you take one more? Or? Hey, Helen. Can you talk about your mindset right before a match? Like, what are you thinking the five to ten minutes before you wrestle?